same, only broader. If any used to carry me on it. Do you remember? It'd be a poor lookout if folks didn't remember what they did and said when they were lads. <laughs> Sorry to hear about your father, Adam. Well, there was nothing much more than a burden to me, sir. Seth and me will hope to build up a decent business now. Well, you've certainly had your share of troubles. Not much chance to be light-hearted, like other fellas. I have just made a better man of you. Uh, I mean to say, I don't imagine you'd have much difficulty mastering a wish once you'd made up your mind it was wrong to indulge it, would you? No. My fault lies to the way. When I've set my mind on something, even if it's only to myself, it's hard for me to go back. That was in a bit of a lather. Yes. I've been putting him through his paces. But to be frank, Rattler and I are bored to death with nothing to do. Oh, life's contrary, sir. But whether some have nothing, others have too much. <laughs> oh, sir. This is where I must bid you goodbye. Goodbye, Adam. Goodbye, sir. Right. Well, there's only not well for the harvest, sir. Yes, Joshua. Yes, it is indeed. Man, come on, is it yes or is it no? I made you a splendid offer and the cat's got your tongue. The answer's I, sir. Make no mistake and thank you kindly. Don't thank me. Thank Arthur. You wore me down against my better judgment. I wanted an older man to take stewardship of the woods. Still... Does he a good chap? So I trust the day will come, and I will thank you. I want the job well done. There will be no favors I show you. Just a thing is usually reason enough for the old devil to reject it. And yesterday he called me in and said he changed his mind. From here to the common and the woods will be in your sole charge. You know as well as I do the sorry state there. And dear God, the management of this place disgusts me. Now at least, I've been able to put the right man in one of the key jobs. It means a lot to me, sir. It's not just the money, though God knows that's welcome. But well, there's no man I'd rather work for. I reckon there's everyone's hopes for the future are pinned on you, sir. What's they got these Sunday clothes on for? I'm going up to the old farm. What's he got the best clothes on for to go to old farm? Poor keeping company with folks as don't like to see thee in the working jacket. He knows very well why, mother. A man has other feelings besides what he owes his mother. And they must make up my mind as I'll not give way to thee where I've a right to do what I like. Eh, and who likes to see thee in the best clothes better nor thy mother?
Your aunt's asking for you, Eddie. There's not many more to get. That'll do. Aunt wants me to leave some on. That in your frog, you can put it in water after. <laughs> That's like the ladies and the pictures at the chase. They mostly got flowers or feathers in their hair. But somehow, I don't like to see them. What can a woman have better nor her own hair? Even Dinah Morris looks nice. For all, she wears such a plain cap and gown. Seems to me as a woman's face doesn't want flowers. It's almost like a flower itself. I'm sure yours is. potatoes. Congratulations, Adam. No man could be happier than me to see the steward of the woods. Oh. The captain never did a fairer thing in his life. I speak for us all when I say we look forward to the day when he's our landlord. Aye, and good riddance to the old squire, whose name's no better than Brimstone in everyone's nose. True enough, the old squire's got none but the devil to his friend. But I've known the captain since he was a little and and I've never known anything on him but was good and honourable. You'll make no man's bread bitter if you can help it. Adam, will you take some vinegar with your lettuce? Ah, you're in the right not to. It's more the flavour of the chant, am I thinking? It's a poor eating when the flavour of the meat lies in the cruet. There's folk who make bad butter and trusted the salt too high, David. <gasps> Did you say the like? Oh, the joke's bewitched. Hetty, are you mad? What are you doing coming down like a ghost? Why, Hetty, lass, are you turned Methodist? <laughs> <laughs> you must pull your face a deal longer before you'll do for one. Isn't that right, Adam? <laughs> Her soul. <laughs> he looks too scared as scared. It signifies how I looked. Looks will mend no jokes, I reckon. How come you to put them things on, eh? Adam said he liked Dinah's cap and gown better than my clothes. He says folks look better in ugly clothes. Nay, nay, I only said his would suit Dinah. But if I said you look pretty in them, I said nothing but what was true. Get too comfortable there, Etty. I want you to take Totty off up to her bed before she wakes and gets fretful. Let me lift her for you. I want Dinah. What are you 
Have you? Fine old trees. Not that. I overtook pretty heady sorrel just now. Sure not to come home this way so late. So I took care of her to the gate and asked for a kiss from my boat. Well, good night, Adam. I'll see you to say goodbye in the morning. Stop a minute, sir. I've got a word to say to you. What do you mean? I mean, sir, that you don't deceive me. This isn't the first time you've met Eddie Sorrel here. This isn't the first time you've kissed her. Well, sir, what then? You know as well as I do what it leads to. When a gentleman like you kisses a young woman like Eddie, Take it too seriously. It's only flirtation, and every girl likes to be flirted with. Besides, as you know, I shall be going away tomorrow, so I shan't be making any more mistakes of that kind. Let's say good night. Talk no more of it. Oh, my God. I'm not so easily forget as you've robbed me of my happiness. Your happiness? I don't understand. The only amends you can make me know is to fight. What are you talking about? Hit. Well, go away, Adam. I don't want to fight you. Oh, you don't want to fight me. You think I'm a common man as you can injure. We are answering for it. Go away. I tell you, I will both repent it. No. I swear I won't go away out of fighting. You won't provoke him, do you? Then I say you're not the upright gentleman we all took you for. You're a coward and a scoundrel. I despise you. Sir? 
It's a leather bottle. Do you feel any hurt, sir? No, no hurt. Rather done up. You thought you'd done for me, didn't you? <laughs> My temper got the better of me. And perhaps I judged you too harsh. You know grounds to know you were doing me an injury. God knows it's all the joy I could have now to think the best of you. Well, let's say no more about our anger, Adam, eh? Well, we're not the worst friends, I hope, for having fought. Come, shake hands. I cannot shake hands till it's clear what we mean by it. And I've been clear enough already. You're taking a little flirtation far too seriously. This isn't a trifle to me, sir. Whatever it may be to you. But if it's true what you say, if there's been nothing more than a few kisses, well then, I'll believe your word. For I'm loath to think you'd speak false. And you'd be wronging Hetty more than me to think it. You can't suspect me without insulting her. Nay, nay, sir. Things done a lie level between Hetty and you. She's all but a child. As any man of conscience ought to feel bound to take care on. Whatever you may think, I know you've put false notions in her head and expensive presents in her hand. Leave me alone. I got out of my feet it enough without you worrying me. Then I ask you to undeceive her before you go away. You want to be gone forever. You mustn't leave her behind with some notion in her head that you love her. No more now. I'll see you tomorrow. Right. To Tell her the truth. Take the blame yourself. I can do what I think necessary without making promises to you. I shall take whatever measures I think proper. That's not good enough. I must know what ground I'm treading on. I must be safe as you put an end to war never to have started. I can't stand any more of this. Yeah, but tell me outright as she can never be my wife. Now tell me, you've been lying. Or else promise me what I've said. Promise. Yes, I promise. Now let me go.